Where are, are we on? Hello, Facebook Live. I'm Tim Minchin, and I'm sitting here with uh, little-known up-and-coming art, artist Paul McCartney, who uh, we're, we're here to make an announcement for Australia and New Zealand, which I'm very excited about. Go, Paul. Hey, Tim. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm going to come to Australia and New Zealand in December to play some concerts down there. You know, I'm very excited. Haven't been there a long time. No, I was just saying to you before the cameras started rolling that I'm pretty sure, what, 25 years ago, I was uh, living across from Subiaco Oval, sitting in my front porch, listening to the sound come over the walls, because I couldn't mm. afford it back then. And we wouldn't let you in. And also, and I did. There was, was a lot of language was, at the yeah. door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we are doing today, first, okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to tell everyone the dates. Great. Um, Paul, uh, starting in Perth on December the 2nd. My hometown, go the Dockers, um, then Melbourne on the 5th, uh, Brisbane on the 9th, Sydney on the 11th, and Auckland, of course, on the 16th, 16th of December. And uh, I'm incredibly excited by it. I'm going to try and be down in Australia for them. And what we're doing today is uh, we've got people from the internet who have questions for you, Paul. And yeah. I hope they're all questions you've never heard before, yep. inevitably. Yeah. All right. And I will try and answer them. I might refuse to answer a few. It would be good if we could, could have a, a quite awkward moment. I could get an awkward could, moment a, going. Maybe end up in a fight. That would, that would <laughs> certainly get that on the news. That would get some attention and that's, this is what we'll do. And this is what you need. Let's you need more attention because you just can't sell tickets otherwise. <laughs> no. We need something to go viral. Okay, here we go. Um, I don't know how long this is going to go for, sort of 20 minutes or something or an hour and a half. We'll see what mm. happens. Hi, Paul, says Ben. No, B, Bay, B, B-E-A. What's that? Is that a B, name? Yeah, B. 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 Murray from Australia. Uh, there's an urban myth that once you were asked by a journalist, what's it like being the world's greatest songwriter? To which you apparently replied, I don't know, go and ask Neil Finn. Is that a, is that a true story? Um, and, well, is it a true story? No. No. It never no, is, is no, it? No, it isn't a true story, but... Uh, it just isn't a true story. Sorry, B. It's not a true story, and you don't like Neil Finn's songs at all, is that? <laughs> I didn't say that. No, no. I don't, but I didn't say Jeez. that. Oh, <laughs> now I said it. Amazing. I love his songs, actually. I do, too. He's unbelievable. Um, what are your fondest memories of Australia, and will we get a chance to hear Ode to a Koala Bear being slipped into the set? That's a thought, isn't it? Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. Um, Fondest memories, I think, were the wildlife because we don't have that over here. We don't have kangaroos or koalas. Uh, so we went to a zoo and were able to, me and the kids, and were able to hold a little peaceful koala. Yeah, some uh, of them are evil, yeah. famous. This one didn't uh, attack anyone. They drugged them to kill them. It was them. drugged. Yeah. <laughs> Drug no. your koalas, kids. Ah, no, oh my no, God! Just, a... just kidding here. Yeah. Uh, and seeing a kangaroo as we were driving along, and seeing a bunch of kangaroos hopping by the roadside, which you know is fairly surreal it for me. It must be unbelievable. I grew yeah. up with that happening all the time, but I, yeah. I, I must admit that must be pretty weird. If you mm. see with it. us, it was frogs. Oh right. Hopping. Yeah. Well, the first time I saw a frog, I freaked out. So <laughs> I guess it's just cultural. Um, uh, okay, what's your f absolute, um, this is one of those what's your favourite questions, which mm. are always impossible, but uh, Josh Coote from New Zealand says, what is your favourite album you've had a part in recording? Had a part in, played yeah. a small part in recording. Yeah. Um, no, it, like you say, it really is a difficult question because they change, you know, your, your favourites, mm -hmm. and also they're like your children. You don't want to have a favourite. Um, this year, it's got to be Sgt. Pepper, because I'm re-listening to it, because it's all released after 50, yeah, so 50 years, oh, no. oh, and uh, it does sound good. So, but I do like um, Rubber Soul, yeah. and I do like Band on the Run. Me too. And I always think, I mean, I, I find, obviously, like everyone does, your career just impossible to get my head around and and how how you guys survived that and came out being so um, normal and stuff. But um, I, I can't imagine how you separate those albums in the 60s. You, you were writing songs at such an incredible 
rate. Do, do you sometimes think replace experiences or is it very clear what the Sergeant Pepper experience was like and what the rubber sole experience yeah, was like? Um, you know, it, it does merge into one a little yeah. bit. You know, the Beatles recording career. Uh, it's all pretty much Abbey Road. Yeah. So, you know, my main memory of recording is Studio 2 Abbey Road. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've got a pretty good recollection of certainly Sergeant Pepper because yeah. that was the first time we'd been really allowed as much time as we wanted because yeah. we were now off the road touring, yeah. and um, so that was that was different we could we could fuss over every little sound and you know I'd kind of forgotten that we did until some of the uh, films and stuff came out about Sergeant Pepper where a guy he does a thing about Penny Lane he says and hit Penny Lane and there's the piano yeah. and he says but it's not just one piano right. it's eight pianos and I'm going what George, hey, you scallywag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul and you Beatles use scallywags. I just forgot we did that. Thought you made that. But choice. we had so much time that it was like, okay, the piano sounds good. Yeah. Well, let's do another piano wow. with a bit more trebly. Ding, ding, ding. I'll bring out that bit, and then let's put a little harmonium and fold that into the piano sound. So, so you're uh, building that because the reason yeah. I said George because I assumed that you sort of put down eight versions and he afterwards. No, George, decision, it George did like a lot of stuff afterwards, yeah. um, but it was mainly us. Yeah, um, trying to make those Mainly us just on a big creative surge. We suddenly had time, you know, to be like, oh, let's do this. And the chord at the end of Day in the Life, this is a, one of the Beatles songs for younger viewers. Um, famous chord at the end of it. I know it um, very, very well. I'd, I'd just come in and said, have you ever put the loud pedal down on a piano and hit a chord? and just see how long it lasts for. I was fascinated. Mm. It goes for a, a good minute. Yeah. You still hear it kind of thing. So we did that idea, but then George Martin would say, okay, it's running out. So he fed in another piano. And so George would do expert things yeah. like that, which was very cool, you know. I, I was obsessed by trying to end a musical. I just was involved in writing with a chord that sounded that good. I don't think we quite made it, but it's a similar sense of just home. We're home and we're not going anywhere, you know. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, hey, Paul, says Robert House, also from Australia, just wondering how much the Liverpool sense of humour played a part in the success of the Beatles, which I guess is a question you've had a million times, but since no, Ron's really. documentary, it's so present. Yeah, no, it's, you don't actually get asked. You more, normally get more asked about music, you yes, know. But, but I do think it, it, it was a big thing. Because, you know, being from Liverpool, you're sort of naturally surrounded by a, a big sense of humour. Everyone's always joshing yeah. and doing things. My dad would say the craziest things. Um, so th when the four of us got together, we all kind of knew that as a background. Yeah. And then, because we spent so much time together, um, the sense of humour really helped. Yeah. And so in songs and things... Um, we, the sense of humour kind of crept in. Yeah. I mean, we had a song we were really fighting with, um, which was one of mine, which was uh, Golden Rings. Yeah. And it was terrible. It was like, oh, baby, I'll get you golden rings. And it was like, oh, God, oh, we couldn't, me and John sitting down, couldn't finish it. And then we decided to change it into Drive My Car, oh, my where God. there's a girl who hasn't actually got a car, but she wants a chauffeur. So the sense of humour kind of creeps in in those kind of places. And then just to stop you going mad is the other yeah. reason for well, a good sense what of humour. What the, the incredible thing about, about the recent documentary is how much that was um, clear was that your humour and your camaraderie was a su absolute survival. And, mm. when, and when being funny stopped working, that's when you stopped. Like really, when it all got so that's serious true. that you couldn't, you couldn't survive with banter anymore. You could no longer look at the press and be cheeky. Mm. That was the beginning of the end of the touring era. That, that's certainly how no, it I, I think that's right, yeah. That's and true. It's amazing that you got out at that point instead of letting that... Because mm. um, mm. then, subsequently, there was still all that wit in the lyrics. I mean, I'm obsessed by um, wit in lyrics, and, and that's why, I, for me, part of the many reasons that yeah. you guys are so important to me is that you were witty all the time. There was all this mm. stuff going on. That's yeah. brilliant. 
Anyway, this is going to just turn into one of those. <laughs> anyway, all, so it's anyway. All, it's all down to Liverpool. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, I uh, went back to Liverpool years ago. I'm always going back up, and uh, I have a, a school there, which I went to called the Liverpool Institute. Mm. Me and George went there, so I tell people half the Beatles went to this school, you know. Good reason to save it. Anyway, it was falling down, so we, we did save it, and it's now a performing arts school. Yeah. And I was going back up there, feeling very good about myself, you know. And I looked over, and there's a, an old Liverpool guy. He goes, hey, Paul. I go, yeah, thinking, yes. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Cheers. You know. yeah. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. I mean, there's so many questions. I mean, okay. I'm just going to read I haven't even read this one. One thing I really admire about you as an artist, says Kieran Shelley from New Zealand, is you, your never-ending endeavour to continuously experiment with new sounds and types of music and how you're always open to collaborating with younger artists like Michael Jackson in the 80s and more recently Kanye West and Rihanna. What other modern artists do you like? Um, that's, it's, it's me, well, clearly. Um, besides uh, Tim. Yeah, um, have, have any helped you, in, have any helped influence sounds for some material on your new album? Do you, do you think you get influence back from, do you listen um, lots? <clears throat> I'm not sure about that, you know, uh, I definitely like working with other people. And so, like in Kanye's case, I just got a phone call and my manager said, Kanye West would like to work with you. So I go, yeah, and we do it. I was a little bit nervous at first because I thought, oh, God, it could go horribly wrong. Um, but I was intrigued to see what he was up to and see how he did it, yeah. really. And it was a very intriguing process. You basically don't write songs. You basically just talk and noodle a bit and you record it all on your phone. And then he goes away and... Yeah. And, and that's basically his record. But, um, so weird, so isn't it? The it whole... was great doing it, though, because I don't work like that. I normally sit down with a guitar. So I think it kind of does influence you a bit. It opens doors. Yeah. Um, as I say, you know, I would just talk to him about something and it would give him an idea um, for a song and um, when we finished we, we, we wrote for about two or three days just in the afternoons mm -hmm. and didn't tell anyone because I said you know if this doesn't work let's just pretend we didn't you yeah. know we never got around to it and yeah. don't tell anyone but um, so I was waiting you know three months after we'd finished I didn't really hear anything except hey bro what's going on you know yeah yeah but I'm thinking, should I say, did we write a song? Yeah. Has there a record come out of this? Yeah. You know. Anyway, this um, arrives, and it's a Rihanna song. And I'm going, oh, this is great. It's four or five seconds. I said, this is great. But I have to ring up and say, am I on this? Yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, you're the guitar player. I go, well, I don't remember. He said, yeah, well, we sped it up. So they, man they manipulate it's this a kind totally of... totally different creative process. Yes, yeah. Although, you know, we're talking about Sgt. Pepper, we, were, we loved manipulating. So I think we would have been into a lot of these tricks nowadays because, you know, we did speed things up a little bit. Probably not as much... Well, we couldn't have actually sped it up as much as Kanye no. was allowed to. We, yeah. yeah. Well, and... It would yeah, very Mickey Mouse. Yeah. In fact, you do get a bit of that on, on the Rihanna record. Right. Um, cause there is a little bit goes, how about a mystery? <laughs> and apparently that's me. <laughs> it's sped up. It is amazing. And, and I have no doubt that you, I mean, you guys were pushing the form forward absolutely at an incredible rate and, and pushing production technology forward at an incredible rate. So it blows my mind to think, I guess they're, they're people like Kanye perhaps are the equivalent these days, but I, I'm the same. When I think about writing a song, it's, I sit down on a piano and, write a song and that's just no one no one that I know at 20 is doing that really yeah, it's no, all it, about loops and, and, and it's a strange thing because I get involved with that you know sometimes I'll try a producer I've never worked with before yeah. but I like what he does so I say well you know here goes nothing yeah. I'll just ring him up and we get together and again I'm going in the studio with songs yeah. wondering if I'm going to be asked to use them yeah you know, and it's like, well, no. Yeah. Here's a groove. I yeah. go, now what? And I'm well, like, that's good. And now the producer will say, now go out and uh, sing. Yeah. I'll go, 
Uh, I have a riddle. What? He said, well, just, you know, just feel oh, it. I it's find like, it so scary. It's improv. Yeah. Well, I actually, halfway through these sessions, I've just recently done it, worked out. But halfway through, I said, this is like panic mm -hmm. for me. Because mm -hmm. I'm standing there. I don't know how the tune goes. I don't know what the words are. And I'm just going, yeah, whoa, I really love you, babe. Oh, I got to get it. And I said, and these are the worst bloody lyrics ever. Because your starting lyrics are always bad. That's the point of songwriting, is you start with crap and you hone it into something good. And mm. you, you, you go, what, we're going to leave out the honing bit and just do the, <laughs> yeah. the in, intuitive bit? I, I don't know. But. So I, I ended up, I said, OK, we'll do it like this. Mm. But then you've got to go away and I've got to write this song. Yeah. You know, we'll do all the blocking. Where's the way from somebody to us? And then let me then I'll go where, to where and put words in. But it was fascinating doing it. I bet. I find it weird. Someone asked about, um, I can't find the question. I was scanning through these earlier. Someone asked about, which again is a hard question, but um, just to bring it back to the live thing, you're, I was noticing you, oh, was there a six month break between your last tour and this one or something? I mean, you obviously tour and tour and tour. What um, is the live experience now Asking how, how it differs from 50 years ago is obviously a, a huge question, but also what makes you, I think I know the answer, but what makes you want to get up again and again? And what, how does it feel now as compared to those days as an experience? Um, yeah, you know, I, it's, it's a simple answer. It's just because I really like it. Um, <clears throat> It's a big operation these days. Yeah. You know, there's like 140 people put it together. So I think of it like Formula One yeah. or something. We've got these amazing technicians who can change a, a tire in three seconds. Can't tune a guitar, <laughs> but <laughs> no, so you've got these great guys all working. And so I think that's very exciting. Yeah. And like, that's my team. So I love that. Um, and we get on very well. So it's kind of good to go back to that. It's like a family reu reunion. Um, then the audience is the other big thing. Um, the audience is amazingly warm yeah. these days. I hope you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be amazingly warm. Um, <laughs> now, but there is this sort of thing comes off from which is like, whoa. Um, yeah. And what I do is I tell my prom uh, promoter, I'll say, just put one of the shows on sale and just see how we're doing. And he might ring me back and say, what a fantastic, you know, sold out in an hour, the whole thing. So I go, OK, I'm cool. They like me. So, oh. you know, I, I, it's funny, I remember that. I think when I was younger, when we were starting out with the Beatles, they didn't necessarily like us. There came a time when they liked us too much and just screamed. But in the beginning, you know, some of the Ted's in the audience, were, ah, blah, 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 yeah. and throwing money at us and things, you know which we did collect. Well, of course. Put in our pockets. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't always easy. So the fact that the audiences are now um, very warm yeah. is a great thing. Um, and when you're up there and you've got, you know, a perfect mix in your in-ears and you're, you know, I mean, do you have a visceral, again, this is probably a boring question, um, a visceral memory of, you know, playing in 1966 and and not being out of here and I mean do you do you remember what I was like yeah. compared to now and do you yeah. go oh my how much it's well changed? actually I don't use the in-ears right. so like everyone does and I'm told I should but I oh, like to great, hear then. I like to hear the audience yes. if someone shouts out I don't it's very isolated excuse me yeah yeah you know I just go yeah sure so yeah. whatever <laughs> my response is yeah um so, so yeah, awesome. but but we can be heard. Yeah. No matter how loud the audience yeah. is, we've got speakers that can go loud. So you know, yeah, you do think, wow, you know, this. There was a time when we couldn't. I, more funnily enough, though, what I'm thinking isn't so much that because you you accept that. You know, you just know, yeah, it was terrible then. Yeah. We plugged. We plugged my bass and two guitars into one amp. I just don't understand. I don't understand how you sung in tune. Like I was listening to that bowl, Hollywood Bowl recording. I, I literally don't understand how you guys were in tune so much. It's like no. you had played so many gigs that it's just muscle I think memory. That's right? what it, I think that's it's what it was. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I think really that's weird. what it was. Um, yeah, we were, I always say we were a great little band. 
you know, and that, for me, is what's precious about the Beatles. OK, we were a great little band that expanded beyond all expansion, but the fact that we could just sit down and go, one for the money, yeah. and we all knew yeah. it. You were so and tight. Just tight in, little band, in, yeah. yeah. In, so uh, in early, early days, it was so tight. Yeah. But with me, instead of thinking about the quality of the sound, what I'm thinking about is when we recorded it, yeah. or the young kids that recorded this, because, yeah. you know, I, I was like mid-20s yeah. when I did something like Eleanor Rigby, so I'm singing it going, that's pretty good. This kid's not bad. You know, I, I like those words. Yeah. The face by the jaw, by the door. And I just, and, and that's you know. the other thing that freaks me out, and I am going to just collapse into a pull of fanboying, but that all those lyrics you wrote in your 20s, because I'm, lyric, I'm a lyrics mm. nerd, I, I, I care very much about... Mm. And I care very much, I find it very hard to listen to songs where the lyrics are lazy or, or reductive or, or cliches or whatever. I just, I can't, yeah. I, the fact that you're writing those lyrics in your 20s freaks me out. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to ask a question from someone else now. <laughs> completely monopolising. Um, oh my God. There's a question someone's asked about... Who's the someone? It's Sabina. Sabina. Co Connor Kanan? From Australia, there seems to be a trend for musicians these days to turn their hand to writing scores for musicals, by which they mean pop musicals, Cindy Lauper, Neil Finn, Sting did one. <laughs> and, and other people. And other people. Well, but I didn't have a pop career first. I just went straight there. But do you... So then, Sir Paul, Sir Paul, can we expect to see something from you anytime soon? Can I just say he's not allowed? <laughs> you can't go stepping in my world. Well, your territory. Yeah. That's right. um, you know, I've been asked yeah. and still do get asked because it kind of is a natural progression. Mm. Um, but me and John, when we started, were asked a lot because Lennon McCartney, yeah. Rodgers and Hammerstein. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of the things we liked about it. It sounded like old yeah. writers. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a, yeah. a team. Gilbert and Sullivan. S Gilbert and Sullivan, yeah. So we were asked a lot. But... Um, we didn't like it. John, in particular, hated musicals. Yeah. He liked West Side Story. We liked West Side Story because that was like innovative yeah. and that like grabbed us and it, yeah. it's really good. So good. Um, but things like we went, John and I went, once one afternoon went to see uh, South Pacific. Yeah. And we actually walked out because yeah. he <laughs> just couldn't stand it. I mean, I would have sat. Yeah. I just watched it because yeah. I paid my money and I'll watch anything, you know. <laughs> but he was like, oh, bloody hell, you know. Because what happens is they start, you know, the, the girl in it, Mitzi Gaynor, I think it was, she starts going, I wonder if he's looking at me. <laughs> Can he really see me? Oh, my God. And we're going, oh, no. And then he starts, oh, I think she's looking at me. <laughs> I think I don't know. And we're going, no, stop it. I have to be very careful about how I talk about musicals because I'm meant to love them, but yeah, they're very, very hard. No, there to, are some great to make ones, not suck, and there are some. The old ones, you know, don't survive quite as well no, these I days. Know. Some but of them, but they keep doing them, and I'm like, they don't need to see that one again. Yeah. Let it die. Yeah. All right, um, I'm scared we're going to run out of time before we do. Paul, love your work. <laughs> Thanks, Georgia. Um, so I. I, I there's so many questions. So little time. So little time. Oh, hi, Paul. What is your warm-up routine before hitting the stage? Any particular drinks, snacks, or confectionery? A traditional must-have? Socks? Um, Lucky mm -hmm. scarves? <clears throat> Socks, no. Um, drinks? Not a lot, no, because I don't eat and drink before I go on, because um, I sort of like to feel light, mm. and then afterwards I can get heavy. Um, you know, and have a drink. And, and, but before I go on, I don't do that. But I do have little sort of snacky things in the dressing room that I might just grab, like chocolate-covered raisins. Oh, yeah. A little bit of them. Famously uh, good for the voice. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, you need something. You know, it's a little yeah. snack. Yeah. With them uh, and uh, equal amounts of salted cashew nuts. You are Again, a total rock star, you not monster. Totally. Yeah, I know. This is how the story starts. Well, then that's just after the bottle of vodka. <laughs> that's it. That's just Do you drink any alcohol before me you, you no. none at all? Yeah. You, I, I, I used to try that kind of thing, particularly in the early days of Wings. Yeah. And we thought Trying we were going to... Loosen it up. Yeah, but um, 
It never, it didn't work. I just yeah. forget the lyrics that yeah. I didn't know anyway. You know, so I, <laughs> no, it just, forget the it just makes, of your yeah. I, um, yeah, I'll have a red wine to chill me out and a, yeah, a, red, my a red bull to, <laughs> this stupid. Red wine a, a and a red bull. It's ridiculous. It's all right. It's really bad for you kids. Yeah. Um, Paul, how do you keep your creative juices running? It seems like you have a never-ending supply. Do you have different methods? Um, no, you know, I don't think about it. Yeah. I think that's, that's how. Um, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about stuff, you know. So if I hear a great song or hear an old song that I love, and that will often kind of make me think, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I could write yeah. one like that, yeah. and I'll sort of. But even when I'm just sitting around, if I've got a guitar, I'll strum on it, and uh, if I've got enough time, I'll try and write a song or at the piano. <clears throat> so, it's, it's just because I love it. Yeah. And they, you know, touch wood, they uh, flow so on. because I love it. You know. And I guess not you've never easy. not done it as, I mean, it's, yeah. I guess it's like... No, a, since the age of 14, yeah. it's been something I've done. But, you know, you do pinch yourself occasionally. You think, wait a minute, I was 14 and I wrote this little song, little realising that would actually be my job yeah. and career yeah. and the whole thing. I thought I was going to be like a teacher or yeah. something sensible. Yeah. Same here. That, yeah. that is, it is unbelievable how much, how much you've made and so when you um, say right well let's go on tour again um, what do you go back just through your memory or through your discography or do you listen to decide what are we going to play this time how are we going to get the balance because I've sort of seen the set list of this tour and, and you play 40 songs or something you play almost twice as much as most bands do you've got this obviously almost <laughs> infinitely deep back catalogue, how, how do you choose? Do you just think, oh, I haven't played that one for years? Or? There's a bit of that, yeah. Um, it's mainly, I start with the fact that I used to go to concerts when I was a kid when I didn't have any money. Mm. And so I know what I want. So I think the average audience member wants what I wanted, which is the performer to do songs you know yeah. and hits you, you love. So I kind of start with that and I sort of will sit down and there's probably about 10 songs that I think I'd want me to do that. Mm -hmm. I'd want to be in a Hey Jude sing-along. So, you know, that'll go. Nah, nah, nah. And so I get them yeah. and think, well, we'll do them. Um, and then if there's anything new knocking around, I'll sort of put that in. If there's anything I particularly fancy or... Um, if the band makes suggestions about, hey, you know, Sergeant Pepper year, we could bring that one back, we yeah. could do that. So then we'll rehearse them. And uh, <clears throat> if they get past that stage, if we like them in rehearsal, right. then we'll do them. So, and then I always would like to chuck in a couple that people won't know. Yeah. So we do, we do a couple that, well, I mean, deep fans will know them. Yeah. But, the, you know, your average mum and dad who are coming along who, who really like the Beatles yeah. um, won't know a few of them. Yeah. But then sometimes people come up to you and say, what was that song you yeah. sang yeah. in the middle? I love that. So, so, well, that's a little song I wrote for John or something, you know. Yeah. And if all you had done for the last 30 years is tour your sort of top 40, mm -hmm. then you'd, you wouldn't feel so no, motivated to get you'd, up. You'd be a bit jaded. Yeah. We have time for one more. Um, thing. So I'm just going to take a minute. We'll just stare weirdly towards the camera. Okay. Guy Shepherd from Australia says, what is the best... I mean, I have you answer this. What is the best or most emotional fan, fan encounter you have ever had? Do you have a sort of early career story or any sort of... Um, it tends to be more recent. Um, the fan stories in the old days was just like a lot of screaming. Madness, yeah. And it, it was great, but you didn't differentiate any. Now I can kind of see people in the audience and um, there are two that come to mind. I, I do one of George's songs, George Harrison's song, called, uh, Something in the Way She Moves, which is always quite sort of moving for me because, you know, he's no longer here. And he was my little mate, yeah. George. You know, we got on the bus together and yeah. stuff. So we've, we lived our life together, really. Um, so when I do that, 
I'm a little bit emotional anyway. Yeah. And there's a big picture of him at the back of the screen that we always use. So I'm looking at that and really thinking, oh, jeez, George, man. You know, and I'm, I'm loving him. And I turn back, and there in the front row is this girl who's completely... She's lost it. So then I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah. and I've got to like really try and control it because yeah. I'm singing to a bunch yeah. of people who don't know necessarily what, the... what I'm going through. Um, so that's a big memory of recent times. And then there was another lovely one in uh, South America <clears throat> where there's this very tall man with a black beard, very elegant kind of guy. And he's had his, what well, looked like obviously his daughter, and he's put his arm around her, and she's beautiful, South American, black hair, and she's just looking up at him, and he's looking down at her with such a look of love. And I'm saying, let it be, let it be. And I'm, you know, so it's hard to kind of control your emotions when, yeah. when you see that. So you kind of look away, but then you've got to look back. And, yeah. and also I've learned audiences don't mind seeing your emotion. Mm -hmm. I used to think that'd be the worst thing ever, you know, a guy crying, mm. you know, where I'm Liverpool. Yeah. You sort of didn't yeah. do that, you know, but now it's okay and you can. And I think audiences just go along with it. And, and that gives you know. them that people <clears throat> have such your, your music is so embedded in people's histories A lot of it. and it's obviously so, um, full of emotion and truth for your personal history and when they can feel that you're connecting to the songs that they connect to I think finding that authenticity on stage is the reason you go to concerts you know I think that's it's amazing true, yeah. it's beautiful yeah. um, well I cannot wait to see this tour I cannot believe I've got to talk to you um, we're gonna go Paul has to go and have singing lessons um, he uh, uh, practice. Me, 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 me. has to do some practice sorry Mr. Salmon <laughs> Um, Perth, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, Auckland in December of this year. Um, hopefully we'll be down there. Thank you so much, Paul. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm really it. excited to get back down to Australia and New Zealand. It's going to be great. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. We'll see you there. Yeah. We've got to uh, run off now because there's a bit of a rugby match on. And oh, yeah, else. that's yeah. right. State of Origins, okay. my goodness. That's I hope we haven't yeah. gone over. Yeah. Go the... Blues, Maroons. I don't, I don't, I'm impartial. Come on, the Dockers. Exactly. <laughs>